This is LaSalle Legends. And look at this play. Oh, Philly Gary. special! Why not? <laughs> Philly, Philly! Here's Waller. Waller goes behind his back. LaSalle with two. At the horn. It's he good. did it! Ball game. Unbelievable! Shot from an off Begley score! Daniel Sambuco with 28 seconds left. 4 3, and then LaSalle with 28 seconds left. They get one more! They score again! And they lead 5 4. Here's Keska on the drive. Timby, an open three. Good! Jake Timby does it again! Welcome into the inaugural edition of LaSalle Legends, where we go back and uh, take a walk down memory lane through some of the greatest moments of LaSalle athletics history. And what a great place to start. We have the 2013 Penn Relays Distance Medley Relay Championship of America champions and the foursome here of Andrew Stone, who ran the 1200 leg, Levi Hardy, who ran the 400 leg, Jack McGee, who ran the 800 leg, and then Tom Coyle, who kicked it in, closed it, and uh, ran the 1600 and crossed that finish line first. Also, Greg Balecki, head coach of LaSalle College High School, is with us here. And guys, so happy that you're here. The Penn Relays is just uh, an unbelievable display of amateur athletics, the preeminent amateur track and field meet in the world. And I'd open this up to Greg Balecki first. Uh, your thoughts on what the Penn Relays means to you and to LaSalle as an institution? Sure, yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously being, you know, the, the biggest meet in America held every year um, with tons of attention on it uh, and being in Philadelphia, you know, it's both at the forefront of the sport and, you know, kind of our track and field community in in the greater Philadelphia area. So, I mean, every year it's it, it's a meet that we uh, are thinking about and looking forward to as soon as track season begins, um, you know, and, and with this group of guys, um, you know, from the time they were freshmen, you know, we knew we had something pretty special going and, um, you know, we just kind of tried to prepare as best we could every day. And, you know, and one thing I've uh, thought about a lot in the last few days since this idea came up is, you know, I, I just, this was one of those moments um, that I knew, you know, what happened on the track that day was, was really just a, a manifestation of like what these guys had done for day in and day out for years. Um, and uh, I mean, it was a really emotional thing to watch, you know, so much hard work and, and so much teamwork and, and support all come together in, in really like, you know, just the most perfect way. Um, you know, it's still a day that gives me goosebumps when I think about it. And, and for me, I mean, uh, been down at Penn Relays, you know, every year since I've been involved in the sport. And, and I mean, the moment I step in that stadium now, every time, uh, I mean, I, I just see these four guys taking a victory lap. And, and that's that's what I think about as soon as I see that stadium. If I'm driving down 76, uh, I'm thinking about these four guys on that victory lap. It means a lot to all of LaSalle, LaSalle track and field, um, and it always will. Tremendous perspective there. And guys, for four high school athletes running in a meet with the pedigree that it has since 1895. Tell me about the championship of America. What, what really that defines. I mean, it's kind of defined in the name itself, but uh, to be champions of the country in that way, what led you to decide to go the DMR route? I know there were other options that you had. And then what did it mean to get into that final heat? Yeah. I mean, uh, so Another thing with the Penn Relay is just uh, tacking on Coach Blackie's uh, comment is that th this is something that we were all looking for um, since like the fifth grade. Uh, the Penn Relays was an activity that all of us like were got excited about um, in CYO track and field, uh, really just starting in grade school. So um, in uh, way back in the day, Andrew, myself, and Jack were all competing for different um, grade school teams against each other. Um, seeing the track for maybe like five minutes in a four by 100 meter relay. 
Um, Levi, I'm not sure if you uh, had that same experience, but uh, and then it, shifting gears to high school, um, we we were for, focused on the four by eight for the first couple of years. Andrew had uh, some really good experiences his freshman year running the four by eight. Um, even we had that year had the number one time indoors in the nation in the four by eight hundred. So that was definitely something that we could have uh, taken. Um, but just kind of looking at our skill strengths and uh, seeing what we did the previous year in the DMR, uh, I think it, it kind of made sense um, that we could really put together something special um, and do it against the best competition, as you said, in America. I mean, uh, the, the anchor leg itself um, had four sub four minute milers to be one of the best um, one of the best college runners in history, um, one of the best Paral Paralympian um, runners in history, um, as well as some of the best teams in the nation um, with a giant pedigree uh, that we, that are always in the national rankings every year. Um, so it was an incredible opportunity for us to really um, go out there and show, show what LaSalle's made of. Yeah, and I mean, as far as like choosing the DMR as that event, I feel like uh, Coach Black did a good job of uh, seeing what each one of our strengths was and uh, putting, us in, putting us in those legs, uh, really giving us the best opportunity to succeed. Uh, so, I mean, at the Penn Relays, we just, everything lined up. I mean, the environment there is nothing, isn't, is like nothing you ever really experienced. Um, so, I really, you know, Black did a good job with that. The only other note about the four of us running the DMR, I was actually thinking back on it. I think that was only the third time the four of us had ran together, the first being at the indoor Pennsylvania State Championship meet, which we won, and then maybe two weeks prior at Colonial Relays down in um, William & Mary. So, it, it, you know, we were all really close, really good teammates, so we had only ran, really ran it two times before having won both races so it was, it was really cool and in a way right levi was the, the new addition to the team that year uh his predecessor was mike t candido from the 2012 dmr so tom jack and i we had uh ran the dmr at the pen relays as well the prior year um but the previous two years for at least jack tom and i our our class year we had run the four by eight i also think after like that indoor win that's what we knew we were going to go with at Penn Relays because we just ran such a such a strong time and and basically most of our competition was kind of at states um, during that during that in, that indoor meet. So mm -hmm. so there you go. So that sets the stage for uh, what transpired in late April of 2013, and lets us as well as the rest of the LaSalle community take a look live and get everybody's live reactions and uh, walk through the meet together in that particular race one more time. So we start this race about 600 meters in, Andrew Stone, the lead off leg, hanging with a tight pack at that point. I'll let you guys take it from here. Yeah, so it was an interesting start, just thinking back to the prior year. Um, some people got out really hot, really fast. Um, so that initial first 400 lap was, was fairly quick. Then the next 200 really settled down. People started moving around, jockeying for a position. And uh, my goal was just to stay calm, collected, and in a position near the front of the pack that, uh, you know, with 200 to go or whatever, I could make my move. Um, and Andrew, I'm going to interrupt you just to, to let everybody know you are wearing the white top with the blue shorts hanging in third place right now as you watch it. So that's big Andrew Stone in third there. Yeah, I mean, I, I just add in that. You know, when I mean, I, I don't know how many people would know this, but when Andrew was a freshman, um, I think it was the last year that Usain Bolt ran at the Penn Relays, and we had made the Championship of America four by eight. And um, I remember walking into the paddock that day for the, you know, and Andrew was going to lead off on Saturday afternoon at Penn Relays. There's 40,000 people in the stadium. And I remember when we walked into the paddock, um, the upper bowl was shaking. And as a freshman, he went out and, and nailed it. And from that point, I thought, like, you know, like, I mean, we've got a lockdown leadoff leg. And, uh, you know, for this day, I remember just thinking, you know, if it's fast, I know Andrew's going to keep us close. I know we're going to be in it. 
um, and it'll string things out and probably thin the thin the pack and, and get us out of the fray. Um, you know, and even if we're not in the lead, Andrew just always did such a great job of keeping us right there. And you see, as as uh, you say that, Coach Balecki, Andrew Stone uh, ends up in a pack of four. And now Levi taking off here for his 400 leg. Yeah, I was watching this last night. I got kind of pissed off that I didn't catch that guy right there when we were right coming on that turn. <laughs> I was like, come on, Bob, what are you doing? Like, take a little harder here. But, no, that was definitely – I mean, definitely the hardest 400 I ran. I remember, you know, after handing that baton off, that's what I mean, coming up to the last the straight over here. And I remember just handing that baton off, and, like, my hands hit my knees. And I was like, kid, you got to get off the track. I'm like, I don't know if I can walk right now. I'll be honest with you. Right? <laughs> So, and it would be wrong too, but I think that um, Jack, Andrew, and Levi all ran their personal best. Yeah, we all we all popped off in this race. Yeah. So now Andrew and Levi, you guys are done with your legs. Here's Jack McGee coming around the the first turn here. What are you guys thinking? I mean, you guys are spent, out of energy. How did you guys feel about the position you guys were in at this point? I oh, yeah. felt good. God, Andrew. I was on the infield dizzy with lactic acid. Yeah, that's literally what I was about to say. I was like, I'm still trying to catch my breath breath right now after after hitting that baton. There's it's there's some excitement with the infield and just seeing everyone, you know, doing field events, trying to get a glimpse through and catch your teammates somewhere in, on the track, the oval, circling around. Um, but here, I, I felt really good about Jack. He's off and off, like you said, with, uh, holding on to the pack, and running that eight. Jack, uh, they just set 56 for the first 400. This went out quick. Walk me through this one. Yeah, it, it definitely did. Um, the, you know, that group in front of me was really – they were really talented runners and were really going after it. And, you know, I I think last year I was in a pretty similar spot and I probably went out a little bit too hard and I tried to do too much. And I think, you know, going up to the race, I know Coach was just stressing, just, you know, trying to stay within yourself and run your race and – you know, not try to overextend yourself when you have, you know, Tom on the anchor who is, you know, for my money, the, the best finisher in the field. You know, as, as long as the stick was towards the top, Tom was going to bring it home. So it kind of puts you at ease, you know, in my position. I just remember thinking this, this last 200 was night and day from the year before. I mean, Jack ran a great first 600 last year. And in the last 200, you know, I mean, he, he had battled, but it was – was hard and, and, and I think that was one of those things that's really hard at Penn Relays you know to fully maintain your focus on, on that moment right there and not get a little bit out of it you know as you're just trying to think about finishing a leg um, and I remember watching Jack's last 200 you know in 2013 and thinking like that was it man like that was four years of work and maturity right there I mean and he nailed it in the last 200 and as soon as we were that close um, and I saw the lead pack you know, not hammering from the gun. I was like, you know, we, we're cozying up on this thing and, and, and this is going to be fun, you know? Yeah, I remember Jack. I remember me and Jack at this point right here. I remember we were kind of, we were getting emotional. We were tearing up at this point and kind of hugged each other because we just yeah. knew Tom in this position right here was just going to hawk these kids down. Like, we were just, I, I remember that and we were looking like, yo, like, we got this. Like, we got yeah, this. we knew what was coming, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> seen it, seen it in a number of workouts uh, to this point. Tom was, Tom was a finisher. <laughs> so, Tom, you're biding your time at this point, right? The pack of three, Coach Balecki said it. They didn't necessarily hammer this first 400. And, and you are – you got four laps now down to three laps to, to make up this, that, this distance and this ground. Mm -hmm. Where are you mentally and physically at this point? Yeah, so uh, it was really important when I got that baton not to make up the lead all at – at one time, um, just being really calm, really collected, and, and running um, the most tactical race that I could. Um, I knew that, uh, you know, there was one move to be made that was with 150 meters to go, and that was the last move I was going to make, and, and kind of like the only real big push. Um, and so that was kind of the whole game plan here. It's uh, let's get to that final lap. Um, and then let's wait till 150 to really make that move. Um, so right here is just, you know, let's get back onto that pack um, and let's just hang out there. Um, no reason to push the pace. If they're going slow, then they're just feeding into what, into my strengths. So, you know, I, I was getting excited, but you got to keep that emotion down.
Um, another thing too is, uh, uh, as I talked about, the future best runner in college, uh, Edward Cheserek was in this race. So right about now, I just heard Cheserek 154. Um, and so the previous year, he blew by me on the first lap and I knew the race was kind of out of my hands at that point. Um, and you know, it's kind of scary when you hear someone uh, under 350 mile pace when you're in high school. Um, but I knew that he probably went out a little bit too quick and, uh, and there, there was no room to make up after that. So I kind of knew that this was the four that was going to cross the line. Yeah, and you see this punch right here right now. I mean, let's get the rest of the team's reaction on this moment in time as you realize Tom has made up the ground and it's going to be a kick to the finish here in the final four. Nerves. <laughs> yeah, well, I, don't, I mean, like I said, like earlier, like, I mean, there's a point where it's like, you know, um, Jack handed off that baton and we were just like, we knew Tom was going to, was going to get it. Even when we were all the way back in, you know, that, that far fourth place, like we just, we knew. By the way, that was out. right there. That was the moment. The Mike Brannigan movement move was the moment I knew we were going to win. He went first. He went too early. I, I, I mean, I, I knew he went too early. And really, I felt like that whole third lap, it was a waiting game. Um, who was going to be the most impatient person in that pack of four. And as soon as somebody else made the move, I went, game over. Like, you know, Tom's going to do this. I mean, he went a hair early for my liking. I remember thinking when he went by him there, it was about 160. I was like, I would like to wait about 40 meters more. Um, but that was four years worth of work right there. I knew nobody else was getting back, back past him. Uh, bring us home here, Tom. Yeah, I mean – this was just, I kind of, you kind of black out during this phase, like just rush of emotion. Sorry, I just finished it. Still get goosebumps. Um, Let's go. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, when you, when you made that final move, uh, you really just kind of like everything at once. It, it, it's like you bring everything you have and, and you kind of put it out on the track. So you're in so much pain. You have all this emotion going through you. Uh, the crowd's going, and it's just this, like, deafening noise. Um, and so I do remember, you know, as Coach said, uh, I probably went a little bit too early. Um, I heard the footsteps coming up behind me, and, and uh, Mikey Brannigan uh, did make a second wave, um, but ultimately able to hold that off. And, uh, and uh, as I crossed that finish line, um, just kind of, you know, thinking back on all those years, all that experience, all of that talking about let's try to win pen relays and, and, and do something special, like kind of just hits you all at once and um, probably celebrated a, a little bit too hard relative to what other people think. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that was just a, like, not just four years, but a tradition of LaSalle track and field kind of, manifesting itself at one point so uh yeah it was a really special time and I, th I think that last 200 that was like some really hard-earned confidence that you saw there um I'm sure Tom will tell you you know like there was more than a couple times over the course of the preceding four years where you know I'd watched him you know I mean and instincts were always great you know I mean I remember your junior year when you took the lead at cross-country state meet you know the instincts were great but I remember after the race you know saying to him like you know, I think you made the move out of impatience. You made the move because, you know, you didn't want to sit there and wait and, you know, have to sit with the kind of building anxiety, um, you know, by, you know, by working really hard and thinking about that through all those workouts and races along the way. You know, I knew that by the time we got there that year, when he made a move, it wasn't a move of impatience. It wasn't a move of, you know, uh, I just got to get the lead. And, you know, it was like, this is what I'm doing and I'm doing it now. Um, you know, it was a, I mean, it was a very, very mature race, you know, one that, you know, had taken a lot of time to, to build to. Um, that was a beautiful thing. Clearly a defining moment in LaSalle cross country track and field, the running program at LaSalle in its history. I mean, I'm not asking you to rank it, but, but put it in perspective. Right. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, you figure, um, I mean, it's not often that you're the best team in America, um, you know, and 
and, and, and more than that, like, you know, there, there, there are a lot of, you know, I, I mean, I've watched a lot of DMRs down there and I've seen a lot of teams, you know, win and, and they were impressive, but a lot of times, you know, they win on, you know, on one monster leg or, you know, uh, they win, you know, something that you, you would kind of rank it like a, a toss up. Like, I mean, this was four separate guys who each ran the best race that they could run, but, but did it in the context of something way bigger than themselves. Um, you know, I, I mean, I have not been a part of anything on, on the track at LaSalle that has ever, you know, been, been close to this. Um, I mean, it's, you know, you know, proudest moment in LaSalle track and field in, in, in my lifetime. Um, so. That's great. And so now to each of you guys, and we'll go in order as the legs ran. How has your life changed for the better from this, you know, both on and off the track? <laughs> Fun Relays is a fairly good part of my life. I uh, met my, my current girlfriend of five years through uh, Pen Relays. <laughs> Being able to wear a Pen Relay sweatshirt and identify. But, uh, but no, I think, right, it's, it's given a um, sense of fondness, um, meaning, and, and honest, honestly confidence as well. Just being able to, to move forward and right, go on to college for a lot of us and, uh, and run in the college team. But no, you know, the unique thing about Penn Relays is it's not just a high school meet. It's not just a grade school meet, not even just a college meet. There's, there's pros as well. And so it really spans all the different uh, competition levels. And being able to have that familiarity as you kind of advance the next level um, is it, something to draw upon. Yeah, I mean, so like, I, I have a son now, and um, we actually just went for, like, when we go for our walks, he loves to run. This kid run uh, half a mile without stopping around the block. Um, so, and we have that plaque up in, up in LaSalle, so for him to be able to, you know, hopefully one day go there uh, and just see that, remember that. And, Hopefully be there um, when, it's, when it's his time. But uh, it's definitely going to be a lot for me. If, if for me, you know, like you said, Penn Relays is a huge meet. It, it, it can be a little bit intimidating as, a, you know, as a freshman, sophomore running down there. And, you know, when you – it, it kind of just taught me that when you kind of buy into a program, you know, really fully commit with a group of guys that you are – that you love, that you can really, you can really, if you set your mind though, you can really go out there and, um, you know, you know, accomplish your goals. And it, it could be a little bit intimidating at first, but um, when you kind of lean on these guys through those tough days, those tough workouts, um, you know, it, it, it can happen and it's, it's a reality. So, I mean, that, that was an awesome day for, for me personally and all of us. So, yeah. I totally agree with what Jack said. Um, another thing too is, uh, you know, I have a little brother who is uh, currently a junior on the team. Fortunately, he won't get to uh, have any pen relays experiences this year. Uh, but just thinking about what that meant for the little salad track and field program and, and people like my little brother, um, it kind of just raised the bar on, on what the expectations of the program is and uh, what's like, what will sal and under the tutelage Greg Bilecki is capable of doing. And uh, I think that you've seen after, after this, that year, um, there was a new expectation set. And uh, in a lot of ways, those teams have met that expectation, like winning cross country states, um, consistently being on the podium across all state championships, multiple individual state championships. Um, and, and then seeing my little brother um, kind of, be a part of that program and see where it's come from, you know, just seven years ago is something that's uh, really special to me. Um, and then, uh, I mean, another thing too, is that, uh, you know, pen relays, like it's so sad that it got canceled this year, like breaks my heart. Um, but now I, I live in San Francisco right now. And, uh, you know, occasionally you cross someone who um, was somewhat related to the track scene in Pennsylvania here. It's a running community is pretty tight. And, uh, everyone when you find out that you're a pennsylvania track runner the first thing is you run the pen relays and uh so like you know those legends are, are kind of created there um and so it's something that never never leaves um you know you, you're always a, a pen relays champion and and share those stories with uh your friends family and loved ones and kind of always live on so something really special 
and a great experience to get back together and watch this. Uh, obviously, some trying circumstances out in the real world right now, but a really cool opportunity to do something like this. And I hope it was valuable to you. I know it'll be valuable to the LaSalle community to have this opportunity to re-experience it with the team itself. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time and, and again, hope this was something uh, special for you guys. Yeah, Bob, thank you for doing this. Thanks for organizing. It's awesome. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Bob. My pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your day and to the LaSalle community. Hope you enjoyed this inaugural edition of LaSalle Legends. And until next time, hope everybody stays safe and healthy.